I've developed a project in Python for job shop scheduling. The output of the underlying model uh, could look something like this. You can see here the set of tasks that have been scheduled, in this case over a three-day time horizon, and a machine park with six machines. The project folder is shown here, and you can see there is a input directory where there are two input files that uh, you can provide. One are the set of tasks and another file is the distance matrix. All of the input formats can of course be customized in uh, follow-up consultations. This is referring to a downloadable project on my blog that I made available for purchase for a, a small fee in my, in my shop. The uh, tasks file, if you open that, currently looks like this, that um, there's a column with the order numbers and a column with the associated material numbers. The assumption right now is that each order number has a unique material number. Then there's a setup time column and a processing time column and the sum of those two columns is then provided here in the total time column. The processing time is the the actual processing time of the underlying uh, quantity of products associated with the order number and the setup time is the raw setup time in this case in minutes but could of course be any um, time unit that you want to use. The, the setup times are as I said the raw setup times and uh, they are used uh, as default setup times and changeover times but if a changeover takes place after another product has been produced on the same machine, the distance matrix is used to discount the setup times and thereby the actual changeover time is calculated. The distance matrix itself looks like this. It's basically a matrix that you have to provide that um, specifies the discount rate from changing over from one material number which would be in the specific row, to another material number. This discount rate uh, is then applied to the raw setup time and models the, um, the changeover time uh, between these two material numbers if this changeover takes place on the same machine. I tried to illustrate on this slide what the underlying constraints and uh, expected input information are on this uh, library and uh, exemplary model application and what the scope is. So this tool will consider a set of tasks that you have to provide in a specified uh, format and it assumes that every task can run on every machine and that every machine can only run one job at the same time. The machine park itself can be assumed to be subdivided into machine groups and it is assumed that each machine group has one operator. And it is possible to specify a break plan for this entire machine park. Since there's only one operator per machine group, there's only one changeover or setup that can take place at the same time within this machine group. And if there's a break in the break plan, then no changeovers or setups can take place during that time window. The underlying model is a time index model, so the continuous time space is um, turned into a discrete time space with time slots, and the scheduling tool basically schedules these time slots. Another thing you can provide is the distance matrix. As I already explained, this is used to discount the raw setup times to actual changeover times. The break plan I already mentioned. The machine data would be in this case the machine groups and also the uh, machine capacity. And then there is the possibility to specify a target utilization, which is used to load jobs into the planning horizon. The planning horizon is then also another parameter that you can specify. If you go back to the project folder, you can see there is a configuration file. Currently I made this a Python file. If you open this file, uh, you will be able to change uh, some settings for this uh, solver 
um, for, for the scheduling uh, tool and um, at the associated library. So you can set the planning horizon, which are basically the uh, parameters up here. In this case, this would be the number of days of the planning horizon. It's then here converted into seconds. And um, you can also specify the length of a time slot in amount of seconds. The larger the time slot, the faster the solution, but the less fine granular the uh, scheduling result. So the smaller the time slot, the more precise your solution becomes, the less, um, the less inefficient uh, planning you have in your schedule, but the longer the solver will take to run. And uh, here you can specify uh, the time slots where uh, this is basically the break plan. So the blacklisted time slots where no setups or changeovers are allowed to take place in any of the machine groups. Here you can specify the amount of machines and here you can specify uh, the machine group. So this would, for example, be one machine group, this would be one machine group, and this would be, would be the last machine group. And here you can specify low target per machine and target utilization. Low target per machine is used to identify whether a job is a long running job. So if a long running, so if a task in the task list has a uh, forecasted duration of, in this case, 80% or more of the planning horizon, this job is recognized as being a long running job. And long running jobs are pre-assigned to one of the machines uh, with a heuristic and the machine is then excluded from the actual mathematical scheduling model. This is done to make the scheduling more time efficient and to make the solver run faster. So the larger this parameter, the longer the jobs have to be in order to be recognized as long running jobs. The target uh, utilization here is used to uh, specify what the um, how many jobs you're going to load into the actual scheduling algorithm. So after the pre-assignment of long-running jobs, you have some machines and jobs that are still available for scheduling in the job list. And the um, scheduling tool will then load the amount of jobs into the, the planning horizon up until this target utilization. This is done using the forecasted duration times of the jobs. If you set this factor to be very large, it might be that um, too many jobs are loaded into the planning horizon and when running the actual mathematical model, no feasible schedule can be found. Keep in mind that the jobs then also have to be assigned to machines and this, the blacklisted time slots have to be considered. So um, if you want to integrate this into a, a real production planning system, you will have to um, develop some kind of communication um, with this uh, with this tool, you will have to turn it into a library. I can also do that for you. Um, and then you will have to check, uh, do a pre-check if the loaded schedule is actually uh, feasible. And if not, you have to load the jobs again, as, um, specifying a new target utilization. Large well uh, is not something you have to change. This is set by default as it's used for the mathematical model. Um, basically, this is what would be as, uh, referred to as a big M value. Um, but nothing you have to worry about. The parameters here can be used to run the model faster. So you can set, for example, the fast parameter to true. And if you set it to true, um, the scheduling, uh, the, the mathematical model will return a schedule even if it's not 100% uh, optimal. Um, and it will use a specified absolute um, deviation gap for that. So you can uh, use these parameters to um, accept a less optimal solution um, with the benefit of having a faster solution run. Um, in this example uh, that I showed here uh, with the schedule in the beginning of this video, I, uh, I don't have to use this. And if the parameter is false, this means that the solution um, uses a, a, an exact solution. Then parameter key, K is the machine capacity, so the amount of time slots per machine that can be used for scheduling and, and production. So we can execute this now with the parameters that you can see on my screen. 
with the job list provided here in the task list, then you will see that uh, it will execute the implemented model. This is the solver log. Here you can see whether it found an optimal solution, which in this case it did. There you can see the time it took to find the solution. This is the information from the CPC solver. You can also use Kurobi if you have a license. Okay, and then we can see the uh, schedule in the output folder. The output folder is the results folder. So if we go here and uh, we look at the schedule, we can see the output schedule here. We can also open a CSV file where the scheduling data is provided in CSV format. Now we can, for example, adjust the planning horizons. So let's say we want to uh, develop a schedule for a two-day planning horizon. Then I can adjust the number of days here. And then I can run the model again. Now it's building the model and it solved it, found an optimal solution. We look in the uh, output folder, we can open the schedule again. Not yet. Yeah, and now you can see the new schedule here for a uh, two day planning horizon. These are the long running jobs. These are the jobs that are basically pre assigned with a heuristic. And these are the jobs that have been scheduled. Now, in terms of the underlying technique or, or method, I use a mixture of heuristics and exact solving. And in this case, this means that long-running jobs are pre-assigned. So I choose one machine um, that receives this long-running job, and then this machine is excluded from the actual mathematical solving run to make the solving faster. This is the first heuristic. The second one is that the first setup on each machine and the first changeover is calculated using a heuristic. This is also done to aid the solution time. And then all changeovers after that are done by a uh, time index mathematical uh, model using the coin OR CPC solver. You can also use the Gurobi solver for solving those remaining changeovers. As a final remark, the project folder itself contains the main uh, PY file which implements one exemplary application of the underlying library that I developed for this Python project. And this library contains uh, a framework file for modeling, um, for, for handling the data, uh, the scenario data of the uh, scheduling run. It contains a heuristic uh, file that contains some of the heuristic calculations and model file for um, handling uh, the uh, optimization model itself uh, using the pulp library in uh, Python. Then there are some utilities and if you look uh, into the data folder here are some classes for handling job data, machine data and machine group, group data. Um, so you can use this library to implement your own exemplary application. Um, yeah, and in any case, this should, used, uh, should be used as a, as a first prototype, uh, as a template, either for trainings and workshops or for um, additional customizations. And if you need customizations like that, then you could, for example, contact me and I can do um, these customizations for you. So you can find this uh, project, as I said, on my on my blog here, I wanted to um, present that um, you can develop a scheduling uh, tool like this in Python. And um, if you want to use the template itself, you can download it from my blog. It's available in my shop and I made it available for a small fee. The link is in the video description.